All right, so 3.5, something you probably already know, but we're going to give you justification with some visualization. So we got parallel lines. All right, and then we have A, B, and C. Since they form a straight line, we know they add up to 8, 180. So the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle B plus the measure of angle C equals 180. They're not a linear pair because there's more than two. But we know they add up to 180. Now these are parallel. So I'm going to start thinking of alternate interior angles. So there's one set with the A. All right. So since those are congruent, I can label that with an A as well. Same thing over here with the C. All right. So that means I can transfer the C down there. Well, if you notice, A, B, and C now make up the angles of the triangle. So if the measure of angles of A, B, and C add up to 180, so do the angles of the triangle. So therefore, we have just justified or proven that the sum of the measures, all right, the sum of the measures of the interior angles of a triangle is 180 degrees. All right. Okay, so next up, some quick terms. All right, an exterior angle, all right, of a polygon. An exterior angle of a polygon is an angle formed by a side and an extension of an adjacent side. So if I draw in a pentagon, that's an exterior angle. It simply forms a linear pair with the interior angle. All right, the remote, R-E-M-O-T-E. The remote interior angles of a triangle are those interior angles that are not adjacent. That are not adjacent to the given exterior angle. All right. Now, here's what's new. All right. So this is my exterior angle. I'm going to call that A and that B. All right. That's the exterior angle. And then we got A and B. They're the remote interior angles. If I call this C... Then we just realized A plus B plus C equals 180. All right. Well, the exterior angle plus C equals 180. So from all the linear pair and all, all the work we did last week, you'll realize that A plus B equals 180 minus C using the subtraction property of equality. And the exterior angle equals 180 minus C. Well, would you look at there? These two end up being exactly the same. So what can you then conclude by substitution or the transitive property? The exterior angle is equal to the sum of the two interior angles. So the measure, all right, of each exterior angle of a triangle equals the sum of the measures of its two remote interior angles. I forgot to put this in. That's theorem 312. I apologize. All right. So now we got some problem solving to do. All right. So we're looking at triangles. Always look for the triangle that gives you two angles first. So there's a 39 and there's a 28. 39 and 28 is 67. So I'm going to do 180 minus 67. Because the three angles add up to 180. That makes X 113. All right, now by linear pairs, y is going to be 67. Notice, notice that's an exterior angle for that triangle that equals the sum of those. So if I wanted to, 113 equals 64 plus z. Well, 113 minus 64 is 49, so this one must be 49 degrees. All right. A lot of times I describe the exterior angle theorem, the theorem 312, as a convenience theorem because you can certainly do it using angle sum of a triangle, all right, but that's just done quickly. Now, if I go to the next one, 37 degrees, C is 143 by linear pairs. A is going to be 37, all right, by vertical angles. 37 and 109 is 146. Angles of a triangle add up to 180, so that means B must be 34. All right, again, 143 is the exterior equals the sum of the interiors if you want to go that direction. All right, number six, 130 makes this 50. 
50 and 63 is 113. Subtract 113 from 180 and X is 67. Or 130 equals X plus that. Take away the 63 and you got 67. If that one's 63, then Y is also 63. All right. 63 and 85 is 148. Subtract that from 180 and Z is 32. All right. Next page. All right. Which of the numbered angles are exterior angles? Well, 4 is an exterior angle because it forms a linear pair with 1, and so is 6. They both form that. Now, 5 isn't. 5 is a vertical angle. It's not an extension of one side. Now, if I go to the other ones, 10. 10 is an exterior angle because it forms a linear pair with 2. 8 is an exterior angle because it forms a linear pair with 3. All right, 9 is not, because 9 is not forming it, and either is 7. Which two exterior angles share the same remote interior angle? Explain. Well, we just figured that out. It's 4 and 6. All right, because they both form a linear pair with 1. Which two angles share the same remote interior angles? Explain. Okay, well, that means 4 and 6. Once again, because if they're located from the same supplement, and they're going to have the same remote interior angles. All right, now, these I'm going to do with the remote interior angle theorem that we just talked about. All right, so that's 30, that's 99. That means 1 has got to be 129 by the sum. All right, now I'm looking over here. 26.8 and 48.3, the two remote interior angles equal the sum. So all I'm going to do is 48.3 minus 26.8. All right. And you'll see you get 21.5. So angle 2 is 21.5 degrees. All right. Now number 10. Again, 3 is the sum of the 2. 62 and 44 is 106. So 3 would have to be 106. All right. 4 that forms a linear pair with it is 74. Now, could you have done the 74 first and then did the 106? Absolutely, that's your choice. Okay, we will show you a problem in class, and I'll videotape it for the virtuals of when you absolutely positively have to use exterior angles. It's an algebraic implication that we'll go through. All right, number 13, the ratio of the angle measures of the acute angles in a right triangle is 1 to 3. All right. So, a right triangle, one of the angles is 90 degrees, which means the other two add up to 90 degrees. So, angle 1 plus angle 2 equals 90 degrees. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to take the given ratio, which is 1 to 3. All right? We're going to write it like this, 1 and 3, and then we're going to put variables. It's called the common multiplier. All right? So, that's what we're going to do. 1x plus 3x is 4x, 4x is equal to 90, divide by 4 and x is 22.5. All right, again, what we then do with that x is plug it back in. Well, anything times 1 stays exactly the same, so angle 1 is going to be 22.5, and then if we plug it in and multiply by 3, we get 67.5. So all you do is... The ratio, parts of the ratio, become the coefficients of your variables. Collect like terms, solve for your common multiplier, and then plug it back in. The measure of one angle of a triangle is 61 degrees. The other, angle, the other two angles are in a ratio of 2 to 5. All right, well, here we go in practice. All right, our ratio is 2 and 5, so 2x plus 5x equals 119. Why 119? Because the one angle is 61, and 180 minus 61 is 119. 7x equals 119. X equals 17. All right. And then again, we plug it back in. 2 times 17 is 34. 5 times 17 is 85. 34 and 85 add up to the 119 I'm looking for. Boom. All right. 15, the measure of the exterior angles of a triangle is 110. The measures of its remote interior angle is in a ratio of 2 to 3. Now is when you have to use the remote, okay? So basically 2x plus 3x 
equals 110. If not, you're going to have to plug the 110 back in to get 70. Subtract that from 180 and you get the 110, but it's going to take you a while. 2x and 3x is 5x. 5x is 110. Divide by 5x is 22. And then we plug it back in. 2 times 22 is 44 degrees. 3 times 22 is 66 degrees. So that's how we solve the ratio problems. And I'm pretty confident one of those will show up again. All right, next one. Think about a plan. The measure of an exterior angle, triangle DF is 4X. The measures of this angle's remote interior angles of one of them is X plus 23. The measure of the other remote interior angle is 2X plus 12. Find the value of X, the measure of each angle in the triangle, and the measure of the exterior angle. So, all right, 4X is the exterior. Well, we'll give you some structure. Exterior equals interior plus interior, the remote interiors. Okay? The exterior angle, they tell you, is given by the expression 4X. One of the angles, remote interior angles, is X plus 23. The other one is 2x plus 12. So we set up our equation. All right? x plus 2x is 3x. 3x plus 35 equals 4x. Bring the 3x over by subtracting, and x equals 35. All right? If I plug that back into the original expression, 4 times 35 makes the exterior one, 140. Plug it in here, 35 plus 23 makes one of the interiors 58. 2 times 35 is 70, 70 plus 12 is 82. Boom, I got all of them. All right, now the remaining angle of the triangle must be then what? 40 degrees, how do we get it? Well, we either subtract the 140 from 180 directly because that's the exterior and the remain, remote, remaining interior angle forms a linear pair or just add up to 58 and 82. Either way, we get 140. Okay, some more diagrams down at the bottom. Find the value of the value variables and the measures of the angles. Well, that angle is 90 degrees. We talked about it in the ratio problem. So all we're going to do is take the remaining angles, add them up. So 3x plus 4x minus 1 gives me 7x minus 1. And set that equal to what the remaining angles must measure, which is 90. Add 1, divide by 7. x is 13. All right, plug it back in. 13 times 3 is 39. 13 times 4 is 52. 52 minus 1 is 51. They add up to 90, so I know I got the right answer. All right, now they're giving me all three angles, so I'm going to add them up. I got a 6x down there, a 1x there, and a 1x there. All told, 8x. 10 and 12 is 12. 10 and 2 is 12. I apologize. All right, so they add up to 180. 8x equals 180 minus 12, which is 168, making x 21. What are we going to do next? Of course, we're going to plug it in. Plug it in here. It's pretty straightforward. It's x, so that's 21. Add the 2 for the other angle. It's 23. All right. 6 times 21 is 126. 126 plus 10 is 136. I got all three angles. All right. Now, oh, look at this. I got all types of angles here. Well, I got to break it down in luck. Here's a 90 degree angle. That one's 61, so X is gonna be 29. Here's a hint for everybody. You don't always find the first alphabetical letter first. It's not always in that order. So that's 29. Well, 29 and 90 is 119. 119 minus 180 makes Z 61. Notice, those two angles are congruent later in the year. That's going to be ginormous. And then if that's 90 and that's 61, Add them up and subtract from 180, and guess what we're going to be back to? 29. But again, we'll deal with that later in the year, but right now you're just trying to find the angles. I come over here. They give me the 90-degree angle there, the 38 there. 90 plus 38 is 128. Subtract from 180. I get 52 for X. Okay, now this one's a little interesting. you got to look at the triangle. Here's a vertex. Here's a vertex. Here's a vertex. It's the big triangle. All right, so perhaps from time to time you're going to have to do that. 65 and 52 is 117. That's that whole angle there. 117 and 38 is 155. Subtract that from 180 and you get 25. All right, and Z is, of course, 90 degrees. Could you have done it in that direction, gone with Z first? Absolutely. But I'm just giving you options and making sure you're aware of what's coming up. 
All right, so that covers 3.5. Hopefully that takes care of all your issues. If not, let me know. Be good.